What's going on, everybody? I hope you're enjoying your Friday afternoon slash evening and TGIF, everyone. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and I'm just bringing you some news and notes around the Brooklyn Nets, including what actually went down with Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets, the Nets being offered four first-round picks to trade Michael Bridges for, and they would have gotten four first-round picks back, the Nets not having a mandate, a non-Lakers mandate, which ended up not being true. <laughs> the Nets pursuing Pascal Siakam in order to try to make Kevin Durant happy. As well as the fact that the Grizzlies, in back in July of last year, tried to get Kevin Durant. And they were going to use every single pick in every way to try to get Durant last offseason. <laughs> Apologize, I'm a little bit of a cold. But first off, I'm going to start with the news about Brooklyn Nets second-year player Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas today has been fined $40,000 for using a derogatory and disparaging language after Thursday's win over the Chicago Bulls. I, I, I heard the quote that he said, and I get it. And this is a learning curve for young Cam Thomas that you got to be careful on some of the things that you say, especially with the media, who are they are out there to twist and turn every single word that you say. You have got to be careful on what you say to the media or they will get you for it. This is something that young Cam Thomas is going to have to learn. You have to be careful what you say. Whether it's good or bad, the media is out there to twist your words. So this is going to be a nice little learning curve for the 21-year-old out of LSU. <laughs> but either way, he was fined $40,000 for a derogatory and disparaging language he used during his post-game interview after the game last night against the Chicago Bulls on TNT. Hopefully, it just stays where it is, the fine is paid, and we move on from it. Now I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes of everything. First off, <laughs> this came from Shams today. The Nets apparently didn't have a non-Lakers mandate. What was floated out there before is that apparently owner Joe Tsai wanted to make sure that he was going to trade Kyrie Irving to any place out there but the Los Angeles Lakers. Part of me was thinking that might have been true because of all the drama and stress that Kyrie Irving was putting on the organization due to the fact he wasn't getting that extension he was looking for and because of all the off-the-court stuff. But at the same time, Joe Tsai and Sean Marks could have handled the situation a hell of a lot better than they did. But at the same time, part of me found this a little bit fabricated because why would the Nets be that steadfast to not trade Irving to the Lakers, that the Lakers had the right package just so they can keep them away from teaming up with LeBron James. That didn't make sense to me. And I look at all the trade packages, the Lakers couldn't offer what the Mavs were able to offer in their trade. I still think the Nets could have gotten more for Kyrie Irving, but at the same time, they still did a good job for what they got for Kyrie Irving in that trade, getting two second round picks, one in 2027, one in 2029, an unprotected first round pick in 2029, and obviously Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith, they made their Nets debut, and for Dinwiddie, his return stint to the Brooklyn Nets last night in the win against Chicago. <clears throat> so I found that a little bit fabricated, but hey, this is what you get. Now, this is another one of the news that broke uh, by Woj a couple of days ago. Apparently, the Brooklyn Nets went hot and heavy trying to trade for Toronto Raptors power forward Pascal Siakam, who is still on at least a two-year deal the rest of this year and going into next year. Does that surprise me? No. And the reason why? Because they wanted to try to make and convince Kevin Durant to stay. So... The Nets, after Kyrie Irving decided to trade, the Nets tried to go as hot and hard as possible to go out there and trade for Siakam in order to try to make Kevin Durant happy. But the Raptors obviously didn't 
see any reason to trade Siakam, and they wanted to try to keep him together. In fact, the Raptors didn't even make any subtractions on their roster. They actually made an addition when they traded for Yaka Portal, and they still have Van Vliet, Trent Jr., Siakam, and Ananobi all on the team. <clears throat> So obviously the Raptors weren't planning on subtracting anybody from their roster. But I find that very interesting that the Rapt the Nets still were about to trade away even all their assets they had just to try and make Kevin Durant happy. And in a way, I'm kind of happy they didn't because I'm afraid of what the Nets could have done and then Durant could have still walked anyway and requested a trade. So in a way, it's better off the Nets didn't do this. And in a way, the Raptors are smart, not selling off their entire team. Now, I'm going to get to another article from Woj. Apparently, one team in the NBA offered the Brooklyn Nets four first-round picks. Four first-round picks. This is from Zach Lowe of ESPN. First, four first-round picks, or at least three first-round picks, Four new Brooklyn Nets small forward Michael Bridges. And the Nets still turned him down. A, that obviously means whatever team offered Bridges this amount of compensation in terms of draft picks, first round picks, they know the type of player that Bridges is, number one. And number two, the Brooklyn Nets turning down this deal, they know how valuable a player Michael Bridges is and the fact that this kid could be a central piece of what the Brooklyn Nets are trying to build in the future. The fact he's 26 years old, he's got he's a 17-18 point scoring player in the NBA, he's a top level wing defensive player in the NBA, and the Nets feel this kid could still get better heading into the prime of his career. That just shows that the Nets turned three, possibly four first round picks down to keep Bridges on this roster. They obviously feel very strongly about Bridges and he signed up for at least the next three years on this team and they believe he can be a central part of what the Nets are trying to build going into the future along with Cam Johnson and Nicholas Claxton and Cam Thomas. <laughs> and if this is the case, Cam, Michael Bridges better be a future piece and a long-term piece of this team going forward. If you turn down four first-round draft picks for Bridges, that just obviously shows how much Sean Marks values the skill set and the player that Michael Bridges is. So I have no complaints at all. Would I love the draft pick? Sure. But at the same time, I'd rather have the player that is already a given, a known commodity, a known project, going out there and giving this team exactly what he needs and he hasn't even hit his prime yet, then while four first-round picks sound great, they're probably late first-round picks, number one, which is no guarantee that they're going to turn out to be the type of players you're looking for, and number two, they are not known commodities. They can flop as easily as they can vet flourish. So I am not at all opposed to Sean Marks turning down this trade. And I want to see what Michael Bridges can bring to the Nets, not only this season, but beyond for the next two or three seasons with the Brooklyn Nets going forward. So I'm actually not that disappointed the Brooklyn Nets did this. I'm really not. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen with the Brooklyn Nets going forward. Now... Another one of the articles, and this is going to, the last two I'm going to mention are going to tie in with one another. Apparently, last July, the Memphis Grizzlies were willing to offer every draft pick and swap some of their potential young talent to acquire Kevin Durant after he made his trade request during the beginning of NBA free agency last July. That is telling. That is telling how much that the Grizzlies thought a player like Kevin Durant teaming up with John Morant could have put them over the, over the top in the Western Conference, number one. And number two, it also shows how much value that Kevin Durant could mean for Memphis. And in a way, <laughs> with how everything turned out, Maybe it was a mistake the Nets didn't decide to trade him in the offseason. But at the same time, does Memphis have the type of young talent and draft picks that Phoenix has? And I'm going to get to that in a second. 
I don't think so. I think Memphis has got a lot of good young talent. I like Dylan Brooks. I like Desmond Bain. I like Jaron Jackson. But honestly, I think Phoenix had the better compensation when it came to draft capital and young players that could have suited the Nets a lot better in terms of what they're looking for into the future than the Memphis Grizzlies could have. And the Nets were going to try everything they could to make the 13-time All-Star happy as they as he can be. So that's very interesting that the Grizzlies were willing to trade every single draft pick they had to acquire Kevin Durant this past offseason. That sounds very damn enticing, especially the amount of young players that they could have given up. So, this leads to my last news article I'm going to read. And this one should not come to any surprise to a Brooklyn Nets fan. Kevin Durant privately requested a trade to the Suns after Kyrie Irving got traded to the Mavericks. Should anybody be, be should any Nets fan or anybody in the NBA be surprised? The only surprise is that Kevin Durant did not make it public, which is actually smart on his way. Don't put it out there in the public. That way, when it happens, everybody's going to be thinking, WTF, what just happened? In fact, I got the uh, news article right here from Ramona Shelbourne and Brian Windhorst on Friday when Durant request, talked to, had, a, had, a, had an interview with, Sean, with uh, Jet, Nets general manager Sean Marks. On Monday afternoon, Durant and his business partner, Rich Kleiman, had asked for a meeting and it was a somber one. Less than 24 hours earlier, the Nets had traded Kyrie Irving to the Dallas Mavericks after a whirlwind three days of action. And now Durant was repeating the words he had said on the eve of free agency last June and that had turned the NBA on its side for weeks. Again, Durant told Marks he wanted to be traded. Only this time, Durant specifically asked to be traded to the Suns, the group that FaceTime Nets owner Joe Sy, who was at home in his home in San Diego, with his decision. And this is more from Winhorst and Ramona Shelbourne. It was not a fury, it was a request, not a demand like Irving had made of the Nets the previous Friday. More importantly, in a stark contrast to Durant's public trade request he made last June and Irving's maneuver, this was to stay private appeal. Durant didn't want a bidding war in days of being the target of intense speculation and online obsession. That was from Ramona Shelbourne and Ramona Shelbourne as well as Brian Winhorst. This is unbelievable. <clears throat> I already talked about this a couple of days ago when I made my video talking about Kevin Durant and his trade over to the Phoenix Suns. So either way, this is just... This sucks, but at the same time, it is what it is, like I said a couple of days ago. And nobody, including myself, should be surprised that Kevin Durant asked for and was granted a trade to the Suns. And in a way, I think this was the best team to not only have a trade with, but also the best destination for him to go, going with uh, the Phoenix Suns going forward, and the best type of compensation the Nets could get back. It's disappointing, like I mentioned a couple of days ago, but this is the past now. Durant's in Phoenix, Irving's in Dallas. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with this team. So I just want to give you guys all these news, notes, and nuggets that are happening around the Brooklyn Nets, including Cam Thomas being fined $40,000 today by the NBA for derogatory and for derogatory remarks he made on last night's post-game interview against the Chicago Bulls on TNT. The an unnamed team offering the Brooklyn Nets four first-round picks in exchange for Michael Bridges, whom they just required earlier on in that day. The Memphis Grizzlies willing to trade every single draft asset they had to acquire Kevin Durant. The Brooklyn Nets going hard and heavy after Pascal Siakam during the trade deadline to try to appease and keep make Devin, uh, Kevin Durant stay with the team. The Brooklyn Nets not having a mandate 
on trying to trade Kyrie Irving to anywhere but the Lakers and the and former Brooklyn Nets and current Phoenix Suns small forward Kevin Durant privately seeking a trade to the Phoenix Suns after having a conversation with Nets owner Joe Sy and general manager Sean Marks. So you all let me in the let me know in the comment section what you guys think about all this Brooklyn Nets information that went down over the past day or so surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, give a sub to NYG Jeffy T85, and turn on the bell for notifications of the next video short that are gonna be happening and dropping on the channel surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. Thank you very much, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your Friday. TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Take it easy, and as always, let's go Brooklyn Nets. As always, it's a Nets world, and we're all just living in it.